so so how how are you how are your days um how are you doing yeah doing good man uh you know adapting to the to the new world working from home um yeah. i think trying to keep people uh, motivated and by people i mean my family and and people okay. at work you know cuz you got to keep the kids motivated and uh yeah it's been it's been an interesting journey man um you know we yeah. are uh, we're we're all adapting everyone's been affected by this and uh different i've got family across the world and it's interesting to see yeah. how different people are reacting to the pandemic differently like i have i have family in zambia and they're yeah. they're super chill they're like relaxed wow. they're going on holidays and i'm like hey oh my... what about lockdown you know <laughs> what's happening wow yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. And, and i mean i mean how from the first time you heard about covid i mean you were for an international uh, organization uh, when do you remember the first time it became a reality to you and what you thought about it i mean did you ever think it's going to affect you or was this thing that was far away in china that was never really i mean uh, i always like taking people and chasing you know when did they hear about it and and, and what did they think about it Yeah I mean we we're a global business right so we we had yeah. wind of what uh, yum china was going through at the time you know but you know it's china man it's it's far away you know you don't yeah. you don't really like, think about it you know but yeah. i distinctly remember march 13th 8 a.m. i actually remember the date i remember the time we we got wow. into a, we got into a meeting room with the leadership team and we were like guys what well, you know this is coming what are we going to do wow. you know and initially i actually remember someone someone coughed in that meeting and everyone was like hey <laughs> and, um, <laughs> it was uh, wow. it, it, it was just this new thing that uh, that none of us sort of even thought about and i think what we did at the at the very beginning which helped us a lot was that you know it's so much to take on really you you sort of have to you have to set your goal post so we said listen guys we don't know what's coming our way but we've got us we've got to actually get our teams together we've got to just sort of have a plan and what helped us was setting a 100 day target we just said you know what let's come back with a plan for 100 days that's our okay plan. and i think that really helped because everybody sort of started thinking about okay the next 3 months what are we going to do you know how are we going to live and i think for us it it really helped because it it framed the the context in a nice way but also gave us a, a target to work towards so that was that was really helpful yeah and and then sel so how i mean what did it do to your marketing plans i mean it came you probably had it all planned out for the year um what did it do to affect that and and do your marketing plans ever be the same you know uh, sorry would you ever get to a point where you planning what has changed in even brand planning for you you know yeah i mean look i mean we've we've had to quickly adapt our entire plan you know we our original plan was was business as usual with advertising promotions and limited time offers and uh you know when we saw the lockdown coming and then the behavior of people changing not only with consumers but within within our category we had to pivot to this uh, new scenario so i think you know we started uh we started adopting the approach of a short sprint so we took we took the entire kfc team we uh we organized ourselves within sort of squads of of people that were responsible for very specific things and we gave people very very specific sort of uh targets you know and i think yeah. that that helped because it sort of mobilizes people around something now, now we've got to remember really that i think from a pandemic point of view is very easy to start thinking about like your business but at the yeah. very beginning what i can say is that we had to do what was right for that moment yeah. at that point in time yeah. everything was was shut down and and we knew mm-hmm. that 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 hunger in south africa is a big issue and it's something yeah. that 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 sort of we we had to do something that's this just right so we, as you know we have ad hope ad hope is yes, you know yes. it's, the, it's the two rand that that you that you yes make. yes and we can chat about yes. that yeah because i'd love to chat about <laughs> I'd, i'd love to <laughs> people <laughs> love chatting about that but yeah. yeah i mean look i mean i think for us 
you know, Ad Hope, uh, we knew that there were about nine million kids that were depending on meals at at schools, at care centers. Yeah. And we knew that these kids would not be getting um, what they would be getting on a normal basis. And for many of these kids, it's their only meal of the day. It's, it's their only meal mm. sort of to give them a, a, level, a, a decent level of nutrition to, to just operate, you know? And, yeah. um, and I think for us, it was, it was scary. It was a moment in time when we felt, you know, this is the time that we have to really ramp up our ad hoc efforts. So, mm. you know, I think we, we went down the route of making sure that firstly, um, we have 140 beneficiary organizations. These are organizations like okay. Worldwide, A Thousand Hills. Yeah. And they do amazing work in, in the communities out there. And what we wanted wow. to make sure firstly, because it was lockdown, right? Nobody, I mean, geez, no, we, could, we, could, we couldn't move. Nobody knew what was happening. Yeah. We had to make sure that they could actually operate in the first place. So, you mm. know, making sure that they had the necessary permits, making sure that they had access to food. So like, barely you would know. I mean, in, in the mm. first few days, I'm sure you were thinking, gee, where am I going to get my milk? You know, where am I going to get my yeah. cereal? Yeah, what's going to happen? Um, yeah, gonna yeah. Happen, right? So we had to make sure that, 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 that our beneficiaries would, would have access to, to the right level of uh, sort of income from a, from a funding point of view, but also from a food. Yeah. So we partnered, we partnered with, uh, with Hope Worldwide. We partnered with, uh, with, with Macro as well to make sure that we, we established a collection point um, and also make sure that we were giving food at cost plus one. So look, a lot of effort went into it. And uh, my, my, my biggest respect to all our beneficiaries out there, um, you know, yep. we need, our our funding efforts over COVID amassed to about fifteen million rand. Um, oh my goodness! We gave That's... we gave two and a half million meals, uh, and it's a it's an ongoing journey. You know, it's it's ad wow. hope, ad hope, and I'd love to chat about ad hope because you know this was an extension of ad. I, th ad I think pe 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 people love it. I mean, <laughs> I've heard commentary on social saying, "Where's my two rand? Where's KFC?" So so. so so, so tonight we get the answer. So where are these two rands going? <laughs> oh, man, yeah. No, listen, I mean, I think, you know, the, the two rand thing is, is something that we, um, you know, we, we get a lot. On social, we, we, have, uh, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of feedback and you're stealing my two rand. I don't know what's happening with my two rand. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and you know what we've done really is that in the past, we've often tried to tell the story of Ad Hope through curated content. And by that, I mean, okay. like really amazing pieces of creative, you know, like a beautiful ad that's been shot and mm. like, it looks amazing. And people don't believe it, you know, people don't believe it. And, and mm. to be fair, I agree with them. Um, I think in terms of what happens with the two rand, so I'll, I'll break it down for you. So you give yep. your two rand, KFC contributes a percentage and I, I contribute a percentage, I say I, KFC contributes a yeah. percentage of their advertising budget we combine that together with uh, any other ad hoc donations that we get. All of okay. that money, all of it, really, is gone towards feeding. Like every single all right. Cent. So there's a trust that's been set up to administer the funds, so all the money that comes in. We have, we have a full team that's dedicated to looking after the fund, making sure that it's uh, allocated correctly, making sure that it's... Um, that is uh, that is audited as well. We audit on a, on, yes. a, on an annual basis, and we make sure that every single cent goes towards feeding. Really, on mm. a on a daily basis. Okay, I'm gonna ask you to to take a guess. How many kids do we feed on a daily basis? Uh, five hundred. One hundred and fifty thousand kids. On a oh daily. wow. Wow, um, on a daily basis. On a daily basis. We feed, we feed 150,000 kids on a daily basis. You know, wow. 35 wow. Meals. wow. It's, it's massive. It's, it's a massive sort of setup that we have, and that's funded by the two rand. And that's beautiful. You know, you know, and so, I mean, do you, have a, do you have a figure? Like, I mean, do you know how much you raised? I mean, I think people love that, you know, uh, in the last year, we I mean, I love that, that the, the stat of that uh, you're feeding 150,000 uh, uh, ki kids a day. I mean, 
maybe if, if if the people that are giving to Rand knew that. I mean, I, I give to Rand and I've never heard of that. Uh, um, r- roughly, how much have you raised so far, do you think? So we've been running for, we've been running at all for about 10 years, more than 10 years. I think if we yeah. if we combine all the funds that have gone uh, gone into Ad Hope and and you know just the amount of money that's been poured into feeding, you're looking at a figure of about 750 million rand. That's over a very long period. Wow. But it's uh, wow. but it's you know and and I think for me the heroes are the beneficiaries. You know these are these are mm. organizations that at their very core. Uh, like really care about feeding and making sure that hunger is something that we don't have to deal with uh, to the mm. extent that we do. And in, and, in mm. COVID times, these, I mean, my respect to these people, because, you know, I have a team that looks after the, the ad hoc trust and we make sure that we, we have the beneficiaries that are really um, doing what they do. But the passion and the energy that we've seen during COVID has been, has been phenomenal. And, um, you know, for mm. us to feed two and a half million people during during lockdown, a lot of our beneficiary organizations were shut down, but yet we, mm. we fed two and a half million people. You know, um, fifteen million rand towards towards uh, towards wow. feeding uh, feeding the the hungry. As uh, wow. it's been an incredible effort, and you know, I think from a communication point of view, really, like I'd love to I'd love to sort of shout from the rooftops about it. But, you know, mm. Ad Hope is, is about doing good. And, and, and I think mm. what we've, and that's been our focus. And to be fair, we do need to, to do a better story, uh, storytelling of yeah. Ad Hope. Yeah. And what we've started doing is basically um, showcasing the work that's actually happening on the ground. So as opposed to making yeah. a beautiful piece of creative, you know, that's like really well curated it's literally yeah. take a picture of the food parcels that are being distributed in uh, in the eastern cape and show people that yeah. this is where your two rand is going um yeah. and that's the plan yeah. that we have and then likewise no. with our with our staff as well we need to educate our staff you know because like for example mm. when you go to a to a kfc and you speak to the you know to to the person that's serving you they should be able to tell you the story of what's happening with the two rand and we recognize mm. we have a big job to do in that case. Mm. No, that's brilliant. Uh, and, and I mean, we talk about brands uh, doing good. Uh, and um, how important is it for the future of brands uh, to do good? But most importantly, you know, and I, I guess it's a catch-22. When you are doing good, uh, sometimes when you shout it from the ro- rooftops, it yeah. seems like it's a brand job and it's not authentic. What is that balance of doing good uh, and sometimes doing good in silence uh, or not putting a TV ad? How do you balance that? You know, you're doing good, but you also don't want it to come across as if it's a marketing gimmick. You, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I think mm. it's got to be entrenched in your values, you know, as, a, as an organization, yeah. as, a, as a business, or even if it's just, a, just, just an individual. You've, you've got to make sure that your, your values reflect the act of giving uh, the act of doing good, because for us it's about making sure that it's uh, we're 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 actively driving it inside out. So firstly, yeah. your your staff, your the people that work for you, need to understand the importance of doing good, um, need to understand the importance of giving back, and that should, yeah. as a result, that should filter into your external communication, into the way that you mm. are uh, perceived uh, externally. So. I think for me, it's, it's really important, especially big brands. I mean, we, have, we all yeah. have a role to play in our communities. You know, for us, I mean, we have Ad Hope. We, we also have Mini Cricket. And Mini Cricket is, is another angle that we take where, you know, we have uh, all these kids that take part in, in, in Mini Cricket. And that's around driving uh, active and active and healthy lifestyle amongst, amongst the youth. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, you know, you, when you... It makes it makes you a pillar of the community, but at the same time, it's quite important that you, you know, that you you're doing it for the right reasons. You know, you you don't want to do mm. it because mm. um, you don't want to capitalize on, on on doing good. You know, it's, that's mm. you, you look. I believe you're going to get judged on your intent. You're always going to get yes, judged on yes. your intent. And if your intent is right, then then for sure, I think externally your brand will be received in a positive manner. No, brilliant, brilliant. Now, you know, KFC is such a huge global brand. 
you know um when my wife and i uh, travel when we tired of the local food we look for a kfc <laughs> you know and 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 that is it almost feels like a piece of home no matter where you are now what does it take and i mean i think you probably got one of the most difficult and most pressure jobs uh, in the industry with running such an established global brand but also having to appease and appeal to lo- to the local market so what does it take running a brand like kfc on the marketing side <laughs> sleepless nights no okay. <laughs> i'm kidding man. i'm kidding man. you know what I, I think we so firstly I, the reason i'm actually with with yum and kfc is that it's a decentralized organization so I, in my yeah. previous life i worked for mondelez or cadbury and we were a centralized organization so a lot of the brand work a lot of the marketing was done at a global level i mean i, I remember once i was looking after uh, the stimerol brand um at yeah. that point in time um you know i was i was told to launch something because they had market tested it in russia and i was sitting there wow. like what? <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> how does that make sense you know so, oh, wow. so i think you know I, i'm i'm really happy that i'm i'm part of an organization that's decentralized so yes we are a global brand but local marketing is completely local so the the the, mm. the end decision maker is a local decision maker um and i think in terms of what it takes for us it's about making making the best of both you know so so we do have global glo- global brand i mean we have 25000 restaurants uh, across 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 the world we gather oh. once a year in dallas to to share ideas so we call it npm that's where we share wow. ideas we um, we see and we we steal with pride what with what others are doing but primarily mm. all the work we do so that's the innovation that's the communication the advertising you know the the way the the, the restaurant looks uh, the way the staff are dressed the, the staff training all of that is done locally and i think for me at, at its core is is insights really you know you've got yeah. to, you've got to be really really in tune with uh, with what's going on in the market and you know my my encouragement to any market out there is that you've got to get out there you've mm. really got to get out there like i see a lot of uh, ivory tower marketing you know uh, where somebody's sitting in an office and be that santon or bryanston whatever and yeah. coming up with work that that you think is re- is relevant but actually is it really relevant you know mm. so and uh, that's where agency partners play a, play a significant role but in terms of you know what it takes to to run a global brand i think you know insights and making sure that you're 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 at the top of your game from a from an international perspective making sure that you're capitalizing on all the access you have because i have the numbers of the cmos across the world if i see yeah. something it's literally a phone call and i'm like hey can can, I, can you help me with that and so on but mm. insights for me is is at, at its core i mean at, at its core insights is what's going to drive success for you you know we consider ourselves a south african brand um yeah. we launched in 1971 our 50th anniversary is next year we we feel like a south african brand if you talk to anyone in our in our office we are definitely a south african brand um, yeah but you know we are conscious that the colonel was 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 american you know it was it yeah guy. yeah Thanks. and uh and we've just got to make sure that we're relevant um by using the relevant insights now we've seen a lot of chicken brands i think the south africanness is a very big trend in uh let me call it chicken uh, uh, advertising i mean we see even <laughs> the latest ad yeah. uh, from chicken licken it claims south africanness uh we see uh, uh, uh nando's advertising it claims south african so that is that is quite a uh, um a popular space for chicken brands now another trend that i've seen and and i've always wondered uh, uh, uh what kfc thinks about this and i think when you are the market leader you always getting jabs and things thrown at you by the challenger <laughs> brands um uh, i know that ad that says you know uh, just before covid Uh, it's not that uh, i guess finger licking good is okay. not is not uh, uh, that good i mean sitting on the on, on the um uh, um brand side you know how do you respond i mean i mean i think a lot of brand managers 
are, are, are watching this. I remember we did uh, a, a political campaign uh, for, for the last elections where we were representing uh, uh, the biggest uh, political party. And we kept on advising, don't answer, you know. Yeah. The challenges will also always uh, throw things at you. But yeah. how do you keep that maturity? Even, I mean, I think, I'm sure your creative agency has come back and said, we could say this back. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, how do you day. keep, you know, how do you keep that maturity where someone throws a jab at you because you are KFC and expects you to answer? And, and, and how do you balance that? And are there times where you do answer or are there times where you kind of say, okay, we are KFC, this is our brand uh, 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 DNA. I mean, how, how do you manage competitor uh, 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 jabs? <laughs> Yeah, look, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fair question. And, um, you know, yeah. it's, I think for me, it's about making sure that you're always conscious of your brand tone and, and your yeah. brand positioning, right? So we are a leader brand. We have 950 restaurants across uh, South Africa. So we are by far the biggest brand and therefore uh, by far the biggest target. Or, you know, by the by the other brands like Nando's, and and funny you yeah. talk about Nando's because uh, Doug and I work together at Cadbury. So uh, okay. I know when he gets up to something, okay. I know because he messages me and he tells me about it. <laughs> uh, so listen, you know, I think it's my, so. I mean, my team will always want to respond. That's a that's a human. Yeah. Uh, especially yeah. my my social team. They're like, well, let's do it. We've got to respond. We've got to respond, you know. And um, and and often I think you know we've 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 got to take our position. And, and uh, you know we've we we are the target by far. Like even ad hope, you know, there's there's so many questions that we get, and we often want to respond. I think yeah. in terms in terms of how we should respond is by doing what we do best. We can't. Yeah. You can't try to be like other brands. I mean, Nando's is a mm. cheeky brand. You know, Chicken Licken have their own sort of tone. And we can't yeah. be, uh, we can't take our tone, our personality and, and try to try to be like somebody else because then we would actually mm. come up very inauthentic, you know. I, mm. I can't be like a Nando's. I don't want to be like a Nando's. You know, there's, you know, mm. when you talk about the advertising and, you know, we can, we can reference the, the, the latest ad from, from Chicken Licken. There are also different advertising philosophies at play, you know. So for us, yep. you know, for us, we call it sales overnight and brand over time. So you, ultimately, yep. what you are trying to do with your advertising is you're trying to sell the product or the or whatever it is that you that you're marketing. So you have to do a you have to do the retail job, but you have to do it in a very distinctive way that's going to make you stand out, uh, and that's going to make people remember you. You know, in, in their hearts and minds, they've got to consider you when it comes to purchase time, right? Now, a lot of the Nando's advertising, a lot of chicken licken advertising is, is more on the brand side of things. And that's absolutely okay. If that's your yeah. brand strategy, then that's absolutely okay. Um, yeah. so, so, you know, it's, do what's right for your philosophy. Uh, do what's mm. right for your, for your tone. Um, but importantly, like, make sure that your personality is always consistent. Um, mm. That you're never sort of mm. trying to be like a different brand. So, um, you know, if I if I take the latest chicken licken ad, I can draw a lot of parallels to the to the Nando's the, the Nando's yeah. ad, you know. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I'm, I'm 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 watching what I say, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um... uh, no, no, I, th I think I think it's very it's very good to be open. I think I think yeah. I think uh, because this platform for us also teaches people because I think these are discussions that that are happening. You you know. Um, um, and, and it's also to to critically uh, uh, analyze without, you know, um, uh, pointing fingers. But but I think it's a valid uh, uh, thought pattern that, that that you're having. You know, I've, I've, I'm in marketing groups. I've kind of heard that discussion. So it'll be an interesting thing to to hear from you. I mean, I can bring on uh, yeah. the other guys and say, hey, you know, <laughs> this is what people are saying. But yeah. but for us for us, we need these platforms to critically start you know, engaging with what is out there because the more we talk about it, the more we understand, you know, what, what the brand position for each brand is, yeah? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, if you look at, if you look at the, geez, I'm sounding like an expert in, in chicken licking. I shouldn't be. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
um, but if you look at if you look at the history for chicken licken and where they where they established themselves, you know, they played in the craving territory. You know, um, yeah. every single execution they had was around the, the cravings. The cravings got you. You know, and and then over time, what I do feel is that they've sort of moved into a more of a different space, which is more in the sort of Nando's territory. You know, Nando's is around political commentary. You know, they're they're very much in tune with 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 pop culture and really sort of jumping onto social posts and so on. You know. Um, and I question, I, I question, why would you do that? You know, and like, it's not for me, mm. to, but as a marketer, I do question that you have your mm. own strong mm. property. Uh, why would you want to try to be like another brand? Because people are talking about it because people are engaging with the other brand. Like for me, it's like, just be the best version of yourself, you know, mm. and, and then I think you, you know, you'll be able to start drawing uh, a, a a consistent crowd that that loves your work, uh, that's attracted to you based on your personality. Um, so that's mm. my view. Yeah, I think it's you know I think the, that's interesting. The industry is 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 uh, is is very dynamic. Um, it's a yep. space where you know um, it's very competitive, but at, at the same time, we do know each other. So I mean, we did get together yeah. over COVID. You know, we got together at McDonald's, uh, Nando's, uh, KFC. We got together and we, we decided to do a campaign where we fed people together. So there is definite, definitely competition. You know, I mean, competition yeah. is good. Uh, competition makes you, makes you sort of, uh, you know, pull your socks up. Uh, it drives a level of innovation. But you can't be the same thing. You know, you, 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 for me, mm. that, that, that is sacrosanct to... to your brand personality is sacrosanct to you. You should be doing what's right for you. So um, yeah. don't try to be like others. That's, that would be my, my yeah. and, and And just generally, I think um, it's almost a result of brands trying to get a, a share of voice. Now, what I always uh, a question and advise my, my brands that I manage against is almost jumping into the social media narrative because... Yeah. It's very good to get what is almost popping on social media, uh, turn it into an advert, and you kind of get the, 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 the attention that you want because naturally it's something that's topical and cool. Um, so I think a lot of brands are getting into that space. Now, uh, with COVID, just looking at the landscape, even beyond a, a, a chicken, how do you think brands have reacted to COVID uh, uh, in South Africa particularly? You know, I think I think there's been a, and it's actually for me, it's it's a global trend where I think the vast yeah. majority of brands have uh, have 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 had to play it safe, just purely because you know they don't know what what is going on. But if I if I look at brands that have really sort of uh, at a global level, you know, obviously uh, Burger King is a brand that I would have expected to uh, to jump on the COVID train and do something cool and something interesting. Um, and something yeah. crazy, you know. But if I look at their behavior over COVID, they, I think it was in line with what a lot of brands did, which is about doing the mm. right thing. You know, this pandemic yeah. is bigger than any of us. And, mm. you know, you've got, as a brand, you have a responsibility to do the right thing. You know, right now is not the time for gimmicks. Right now is not the time for, you know, sort of marketing tactics or people mm. will see through it, man. Um, you know, people will absolutely see through it. So, and I mean, mm. like, you know, when, when Doug and Nando's took a hit at us, you know, just, just as COVID started, there was, yeah. a lot of, there was a lot of sort of feedback as well around, guys, is this the time to be doing this? So, so mm. for me, South African brands have, you know, I, I, the, the classic example I'll use is, is the retail brands that came together, you know, Spa, Pick and Pay. Yeah, they all yeah came that was together. beautiful. And, you know, they did the right thing. And likewise, we did the mm. right thing with McDonald's and Nando's and, and feeding people yeah. coming together. So that together with making sure that consumers still look at you as a brand that is safe to, to access, a brand that is, yeah. you know, taking the pandemic seriously. So making sure that you have the right safety protocols in place uh, and yeah. not being too gimmicky, because I do feel that, brands that have tried to play in that gimmicky space get, get called out very quickly, especially yeah. in media. So yeah. I think South African brands have, have taken a, a responsible uh, approach. Uh, we also yeah. know that it's, it's also difficult, really. I mean, we, you know, we, yeah. were, we were not operating for up to five weeks and our advertising budgets are as a direct result of sales. You know, it's proportional to mm. sales. 
we did so mm. our budgets have also been cut but all that means is that you've got to find different ways to do things so you know from an advertising mm. view um engaging with the agency i mean it would be very easy to just say hello agency sorry we're going to you know we're just not going to do stuff and we'll call you when we need you yeah but actually yeah. it's that's not the right thing to do it's about making sure yeah. that everybody you take everybody with on the journey and just finding innovative ways of of doing things so i mean i'm sure you've seen yeah. a lot of brands are repurposing ads uh, using mm. animation using sort of um, mm. content from you know from last year or maybe they shot something earlier in the year that they're repurposing mm. but it's the responsible thing to do and i think south african brands have have done a good job of that Mm. now now this is a very important discussion and you know like um i send research to clients um and i've i've managed to find all types of research on 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 why brands shouldn't stop spending right now yeah. right but obviously coming from an agency owner they say very really, you would say that <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you, you would find research that backs up your cause but from someone on the client side um Uh, I mean I understand your case is quite a unique because your marketing budget uh, is linked to sales but let's let's say your marketing budget wasn't linked to sales and you just had uh, an annual budget marketing budget um, there's a lot of brand people that listen to uh, uh, this podcast and are faced with this decision should we uh, cut cut budget shouldn't we cut budget what would your advice be in times of crisis should brands be more cautious and cut budget until they know what's happening or should they actually advertise more to be in the hearts and minds of 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 people i think it's about being responsible really so you yeah. know I, for me like you have to do the right thing from a business point of view so from a business perspective you know you can't go irresponsibly go and spend uh money that you potentially don't have you know you have to yeah. protect your bottom line you have to make sure that from a there 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 are more important things as well so you know from a mm. if i look at if if i look at yum and kfc as an organization i'm extremely proud to be working for an organization that took its people at its core and at the at the very mm. beginning of the of the pandemic the first thing that was on the cfo's mind was not sales it was about people's salaries it's about uh, yeah. you know avoiding people's sa- uh, conversations around salaries avoiding sort of uh, organizational structure conversations um so i think you can't you can't you know just go and spend the advertising money if your bottom line is at risk so i think that's that's the first yeah. thing be responsible make sure you're looking after your people make sure you're looking after your staff uh make sure you're yeah. doing the right thing from that perspective and then yeah. once that sort of looked after then for me it's about you spoke about a share of voice yes for me it's about looking at like how how is your effective share of voice you know so mm. again i'll take our own example we looked at our reach and frequency numbers uh, from a media point of view and we asked ourselves hmm do we need to really reach that many people at this point in time or can mm. we reduce that number reduce the media spend that we have but actually really make a really strong effort around making sure that we're still getting the right level of frequency and the right level of uh, advertising effectiveness and you know what we yep. found really is that we we're actually we over the last 3 months we've actually become far more responsible marketers we're far mm. more efficient with what we do i don't think we're significantly spending less than than what we used to do but mm. we are i i i care a lot more about each rand that i'm spending i'm making sure yep. that the teams are as responsible and that you're actually developing effective advertising effective communication and the agency gets the same message so the agency mm. understands that listen you know what gone are the days of you know 5 million rand 10 million rand uh, budgets to make a to make a yeah. commercial I've yeah. got I've yeah. got 600,000 rand and I've got to do something with it. And what yeah. I, what is what is really amazing to see is that the advertising agency I mean in our case Ogilvy is coming to the party, you know. They're coming mm. to us with like really different ways of doing things, uh, innovative ways, using animation, using existing footage or even or a phone call there. Um, yeah, it's just 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 a bit of a, of a pause, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 
um, yeah. you know, and, and just finding ways of, of doing things differently. But everybody's come to the party and I think everyone is sort of enjoying this challenge of we still want to advertise. We still want to spend. Yeah. But let's just be responsible. Yeah. And you know what I feel is going to do? It, it is going to shape what my marketing calendar looks like in 2021 and what my, uh, what my budget will be for production and what my pr- budget will be for, yeah. for, uh, for media. It is going to make me think differently. And, and that even filters into, into teams, you know, like you may have 10 people today and you realize, geez, if I could do this with five people, maybe I can take the other yeah. five people and redeploy them and do, do something else with them. Mm, but I think the, the mm. experience has been, look, I mean, it's a pandemic. It's, it's not great. But I think from, a, from an advertising and from a marketing point of view, it has really forced us to start thinking laterally, thinking, di- thinking about things differently. And what I'm finding is that we're actually getting better at what we do. Um, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Has has KFC because of the pandemic, not even in South Africa, globally? Um, I, I know that you've got most of your shops in China, if if I'm not mistaken. Um, do you think there's any fundamental change? I mean, are you going more online? Has this pandemic changed the business fundamentally, or yeah, or is kind of like the same still? So? No, I mean, not at all. I, I don't think it's, it's the yeah. same at all. I mean, I, I think what I've found in my, I, I am lucky enough to be part of a, a global team that's been looking at um, COVID in totality uh, and understanding what we do differently going forward. Um, yes. One, I think the importance of insights has just been elevated to the next level. You know, we need to understand better what's going to happen in a very chain, very dynamic world. We don't know what's going to happen next week, but we've got to be able to yeah. find ways to predict what's going to happen. In our case, mm. we're, we're lucky enough to have markets that are um, in different phases of COVID. So China, you know, have gone through the whole thing. So we've got learnings yeah. from what China's gone through and mm. we've implemented those. Uh, we can also then give advice to, to other markets that are still about to go through their peak, for example. I think what mm. we found is that, you know, um, we can talk about we can talk about digital and the importance of of digital, and for sure, yeah. you know, I think uh, the growth of delivery, uh, the growth of drive through, you know, like making sure that we, people can access your brand through an app. I think that's mm. there's all this talk is about digital, but for me, what's really critical is analog. You know, what yeah. I've found is that the customer experience is more important today than it ever was. So if somebody goes to a KFC today, you know, firstly, they're going to a KFC in a, in a pandemic, in a risky situation. Mm. So That's brand love, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly. And, mm. and, and the experience has to be really good. The, the experience mm. has to be something that they're actually going to remember uh, positively. And, and that's why like, I think we can talk about uh, the growth of digital and the importance of digital as, as, um, as the pandemic sort of goes across the world. But for me, the, 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 the customer's brand experience and the experience with you when they physically engage with you is, is as important. And we found that insights together with making sure that the customer experience is sound is something that will yeah. help, help us going forward when things hopefully uh, return back to normal. Nice, nice. Now, you, you speak a lot about agency, agency relationships. Um, you know, a lot of changes happened from, let's say, 10 years ago, let's say five years ago. Um, from a client perspective, you know, we kind of in it as agency owners where we, you know, we live it and we see the changes. And sometimes the changes or our perception of change um, is not really real in, in, when you've got someone who's related to the industry but is not practically in the agency uh, uh, world. What is your view of the South African um, agency led landscape? Um, you know, like we, we, we often speak about like, you know, what is going on in the industry and, uh, you know, what are yeah. the challenges that are, that are being faced in the industry? I think from a South African industry point of view, we can talk about like the emergence of uh, new technology and how brands are jumping onto new technology and so on. 
You know what it is, Billy, for me, I think the biggest challenge we face within the South African industry is, is the supposed, well, it's the lack of big ideas. I'll call yeah. that. You know, I, 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 I'm sure you go to the Luris, right? Um, five years ago, if you went to the Luris, the work that you saw, um, big stuff, you know, big, big campaigns, mm. world-class advertising, you know? The last I went to the Luris, my favorite piece of work was a, was a logo design. Now, wow. now, like, now we can talk about, you know, who, whose fault is that? Is it the agencies? Mm. Is, it, is, it the, is it the marketers? Uh, you know, where does, it, yeah. where does it lie? And for me, I think yeah. it's, it's, it's absolutely a combination. You know, I think one, brands are playing safe. And I question, I question the, the, the level and the breed of, of, uh, of marketer that the South African industry is producing. You know, what kind of mm. marketers are mar what kind of marketers are we breeding? Are we breeding mm. product managers? Like product managers are I'll call them Excel based uh, marketers, like people who yeah. are there with their primary aim to sell the product to you, to people. Like yes. that's their primary yes. aim, right? And then there's the marketer who is who is so focused on using creativity as a sales driver. And in mm. my view, people who, are, who, who believe in the power of creativity, there are too few of them in this industry. There are too few. Mm. We're not celebrating mm. creativity at all. Wow. You know, I think we wow. play safe. Uh, we, we make sure that you know, our, our brands are doing the hard sell. But what about like, letting creative ideas breathe? What about letting creative creativity permeate through your organization? Um, mm. and, and that's why I question what kind of um, what kind of marketers are we breeding? And it really, really worries me because the guys that I experience and the, the agencies and, and they're all dying for 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 marketers who are going to embrace big ideas, who are going to take a bit of a risk, you know, be brave. And mm. you know, I, I I just don't see it from a marketing industry point of view in South Africa. We we just we just don't have enough people who are willing to take risks who are willing to do things that may not work. It's okay if it yep. doesn't work. Just, you know, you can try again. But a lot of people are like sort of, if you, if you take a step back as to why it's not happening, people are worried about their jobs. Like, geez, I'm not going to take mm. a risk because, hey, you know, what, I might get into trouble. Yeah. But, yeah. but honestly, there's power in creativity. There's power in, in this, you know, in this, in this thing that people can only feel in their hearts and minds and only as market we we have the power as marketers to do that and it, mm, it makes me sad that mm. there are so many brands out there that are just opting to to play safe and likewise mm. from, a, from an agency perspective really you know I, i'll say this you know if i what do i want from my creative lead that's that's what i'll say you know i sure. want i want somebody who has a passion for advertising. I want to feel the love you have for advertising. The reason being yeah. is that in my job, advertising is a, is a part of my job. I have to look after sales. I have to look after HR. I have to look after all this other stuff. And the, and the advertising part is the fun stuff. So when I engage with a creative mm. team, I want to feel their passion because I'm drawing an energy from that advertising agency, that advertising lead. You know, yeah. And if you're, if you're, if you're gonna tell me what you think I should hear, what you think I want, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Yeah, I'm, like, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. That's you. not why you're there. Yeah. Yes, I've hired you yeah. to be crazy. I want the crazy ideas. I want the, I want the, the pushing the boundaries thinking because mm. that's why we're engaging. That's together. why you've bought in. Mm. Exactly. And mm. and I feel that from a mm. creative agency point of view many agencies are playing the, I'm going to service this client. But mm. actually, you, you, you are in the, you should be an ideas factory. Like you should, your, your, yeah. your job should be just about ideas. Ideas, 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 ideas. That's it. Yeah. Just come yeah. to me with like tons of ideas. If you come up with 10 ideas, for sure there's going to be one idea that I'm going to buy into. And hopefully that idea is crazy enough to find its way into the market. Uh, which then mm. has an impact in 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 sort of in, in society, but if you tell me that as a as a creative lead you're going to come to me and say, 
So here's the ad. We're going to have the product in there. We're going to put the price in there. And boom, yeah. it's done. Yeah, like, not so much. <laughs> why are we doing this? Why, what are we, why are we doing this? Why are we here? You know? not, not so much. So, so, I mean, you speak uh, uh, on an important point of, of making sure that brands reclaim that bravery. And I guess yes. it's the opportunity for the brands that... Um, that are brave, you know, and, and I'd also like to open it up to the guys uh, to ask questions. Sure. Um, you know, um, they, they love the big idea uh, 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 phase. Uh, someone said earlier, social media has kind of messed up the big idea and uh, creativity from agencies, you know, yeah. um, uh, and, 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 and the influence of these uh, fast ideas, you know, where yeah. ideas have to come out uh, uh, quite 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 fast um and 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 if if you if you if you look at your brand um right what 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 do you want to achieve in the future for your brand so you've got a legacy you are in this position what you know when you look back and you say i was in charge of kfc what are some of the things that you want to look back and say, look, I achieved this. I took the brand from here to here, and this is my legacy at, at KFC. What, what, what do you want that to be? I think it's, it's a great question. I mean, firstly, what, I, what I'd love you know, for, for, for me to look back on is, is uh, to land this idea of uh, the, the two rand that you donate. Uh, does yeah. good. Like for me, it's, it's, it's like, it's a personal thing. It's something that I'm very passionate about because I see, yeah. I see the passion. I see the, I see the actual work that's happening with the two rand. So that's, that's something that I yeah. want to just land with, with people. I think from a, from a marketing point of view, if I have to look back in five years or 10 years time, I'd, I'd love to be able to look back and say, you know what? I helped, I helped KFC become a braver brand. Um, I helped KFC become a brand that is uh, totally entrenched within within South African culture, um, yeah. and a brand that has an active role to play in in, in society. So you know, through Ad Hope, through Mini Cricket, um, through our 950 um, uh, restaurants, you know, we ha- we we have we touch the lives of millions of South Africans. And if we could improve the the experience of KFC, just just a notch, that's actually better yeah. in the lives of, of, of so many South Africans. And, and so for me, my, like, if I had to have a, a magic wand, it would be just around getting the KFC brand to a level that is, that is uh, known to be innovative, known to be uh, uh, ground, groundbreaking, and a brand that's, that's for the people. You know, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's a brand that has always been about the people. It's always been about families. It's all about... And you know, look, we we talk about streetwise, right? Streetwise, we've kept the price of streetwise at thirty bucks, thirty two rand. Mm, it takes a lot. Mm, mm, it takes a lot. Mm. You no, know, no, 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 no. Tell me, Sunil, quickly, just before you get on the streetwise, is something that I'm particularly interested in because I've heard that the streetwise concept was a marketing. Uh, 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 initiative rather than a product innovation initiative. Uh, is that is that true? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've heard it as as as, as a uh, in passing. I've never validated that that it actually came for the agency to have like a price leader or, or uh, what's the history of Streetwise too, and how well has it done in growing the brand? Yeah, look, I think Streetwise, Streetwise, and Streetwise Two specifically. I mean, there's significant equity in in Streetwise. You know, when we when mm. we measure and stack up against uh, against other brands, actually, the equity of of Streetwise is almost a brand within itself. It didn't start yeah. off as a product. It did start off as a as a hook, as a as a sort of like platform for us to drive yeah. our value messaging. Let's call it value, and value being yes. the, that affordable meal that's uh, that's going to do the business. You know, the, the thing that you go mm. for. And Streetwise mm. has grown um, tremendously, and it forms a big chunk of of our sales. I'm not going to talk about how much, but it mm. it forms mm. a, it forms <laughs> a, it forms a big chunk of our sales and. And you know what it does do is that it, it brings us back to the end consumer. You know, we are 950 restaurants. We are across the country. We're not only in Bryanston. We're not only in Santon. So our pricing, yeah, yeah. our entire menu has to talk 
to the, the person who is accessing KFC wherever in South Africa. And that's why, like I spoke yes. about the pricing, is that it's so important. It's, it, I mean, you go to a KFC and it's, it's affordable. It's, it's affordable value. It's good value. It takes a lot for us to actually make sure that we, we stay in that space, you know. Otherwise, yeah. pricing, would, you know, pricing would come and go. And by the time you end up, you know, Streetwise 2 is like 50 bucks and it's not affordable. So. Yeah, yeah. But, and, and that yeah. won't work for our model. You know, we, we have to yeah. service our entire customer base. So a lot of equity in Streetwise uh, and something that uh, agency definitely had a role to play, but we've built that yeah. equity over time. And we've actually, we've actually taken Streetwise across Africa. So I'm not sure okay. if you know, but we have KFC in 16 countries in Africa. We have 180 okay. restaurants and we actually have Streetwise from Mauritius to Ghana to Kenya to, wow. to Gabon. It's, it's everywhere. So the equity in Streetwise. Wow. Is massive. Wow, and 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 that's 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 a beautiful thing. Now, just touching on 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 Africa, how what are the different dynamics? You know, because uh, you know I love traveling traveling the the rest of the continent, uh, and what works here doesn't work in yeah. Gabon, doesn't work in Ghana. Yeah. Um, as a person in charge of those brands, how are you? How are you tailor making your strategies? Um, uh, and how are you operating in Africa? And I mean. A lot of people that want to, whether they win brands that operate in the rest of the continent or they themselves run brands or get in a position, what would your advice be for managing a brand across the continent? The advice in one line would be do not copy and paste. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, guys. I mean, you can't take a, a South African brand, you can't take an American brand and, and, and copy and paste it and expect it's going to work. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a team that looks after the rest of Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and, and their mandate. So from a South African point of view, we're very involved. So we have a full team that looks after marketing um, and yeah. know, we do the innovation, we do the advertising, we do the insights, we do everything. From an African perspective, we have franchise partners in all these markets. And mm. our, our sort of approach is to work in collaboration with them. But they know what's right for their market. So I spoke about mm. the decentralized organization and it's completely decentralized. So if the franchisee in Ghana feels that, you know, this product is going to work for my market, that's, that's the conversation we have with them. That, you yeah. know, this is, you've got to do what's right for the consumer. You cannot yeah. ever copy and paste. I, I come back to my, yeah. you know, we tested it in Russia and you can launch it here. It doesn't work, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now is pop available across the continent or is it different forms of localized pop? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, in some markets, also the Southern, Southern African countries, it's available. In, if you go to the West African, uh, if you go to the West African countries like Nigeria uh, and Ghana, that's where you get the jollof rice. You know, yes, so yes. you've got to do what's right for, for each market. And that's why I say the menu, yeah. the advertising, the pricing, it's all locally done in collaboration mm. with us here because we have access to best, best practice. Uh, you know, yeah. we, we've known South Africa, KFC has been in South Africa for almost 50 years. Some of these markets yeah. are, are like one year old, two years old. So we have the experience yeah. to help these markets, but local advertising absolutely works. And it's, it's the only way to go. Yeah. Now, 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 I told you this hour goes fast. Uh, we've got <laughs> yeah, four man, minutes yeah. left. Um, and, um, you know, everyone talks about this new normal. Um, and I kind of say, you know, if it's the new normal, is it normal? When is it the, the normal normal? Um, people cha talk about changing consumers. Uh, uh, last week you heard Mzamo kind of said, mm, people don't really change that much. Yeah. In your view, um, that, will the consumer change uh, or has the consumer changed uh, 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 because of COVID or um, uh, this pandemic? Yeah. Uh, are we dealing as brand managers and as brand custodians, are we dealing with a different type of market consumer? I think consumer behavior, you know, in the long run uh, won't significantly change. Uh, that that yeah. I do believe. But what I also, what I, what I would encourage marketers, and if I had to give advice, is I would ask people, or especially marketers, to understand the seismic shift that's happening in people's minds right now. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, let's bring it home, bring it, bring it, you know, bring it to yourself. Like, how, 
how close were you to online shopping before the pandemic and how mm. how comfortable are you with online shopping now there's mm. definitely a shift you know i think for for a lot of people there's so many of these shifts like many people will say you know what i'm not going to travel anymore because i don't want to sit in the plane and put myself at risk i might i might drive so for the for mm. the airline industry that might be significantly different there might be some insights mm. that they have been to so i think we are going to go back to to normal you know we are human beings we are going to conduct ourselves the way we've always conducted ourselves yeah. but there are some some significant shifts in our minds which i think as marketers we need to better understand we need to we need to understand that from a consumer point of view and also from a business point of view so you know for us like online delivery uh drive through curbside that's something that we've just launched you know what role is that going to play in our business going forward so i think it's both from a mm. perspective and from a business perspective things have definitely shifted but i think overall consumer behavior look i mean for us fried chicken you know people love fried chicken so yeah yeah that's going to stay the same I, i don't i don't see that fundamentally changing but maybe it's how mm. they access fried chicken maybe it's how often they access fried chicken that will change mm. because of the pandemic Mm. Look, Sale, uh, it's been quite uh, an enlightening uh, conversation. Um, do you know the the Nevin uh, secret herbs? Because uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I know people have been trying out their own recipes. So uh, for me, for 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 me, just to say goodbye, we've got a a, a minute left. I've been during lockdown. We saw people trying. Um, uh, did you try to make your own KFC at home? <laughs> yeah, listen, I, I wish I, I wish I, I wish I could, but uh, you know, I think. the 11 herbs and and, and spices is uh, is a is a secret that i think only two people know uh that's wow. what i'm told right and that's hearsay so i'm i'm not sure but um you know i think a lot of a lot of people uh have tried making their own version of uh, of kfc and look we saw some really good stuff online eh so i'm not going to judge <laughs> i'm going to judge i think i think everyone's food is amazing Yeah. Uh no, great stuff. Um it, it's been a pleasure uh, uh, uh hosting you. I I know I know it's a, a difficult time for people that are managing brands, uh, but it's also a necessary time for us to share uh, uh with the people that are running brands. So just your parting words um uh, all from our side from SA Creatives, we'd like to thank you for availing this hour. Uh, uh please just have some parting words for the people that running agencies people that are managing brands people that uh, um love brands and not necessarily in the industry yeah you know it looks uh, really thanks thanks for for having me it's like you said it's an, an hour goes by very quick um mm. i think from a from a parting words point of view what i'd love to say both to marketers and to and to agencies is that you know what we're going through this we have to get through this together my ask would be that you do the right thing at all times you know i think both from a personal safety point of view and from a, from from a brand point of view you have a responsibility uh you play a big role in society as marketers um and you know we will be back and 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 that is without doubt we will be back and my ask would be if i had to land one message to the marketing industry is please be brave please be mm. brave. let's 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 do work that makes that really lands in the hearts and minds of consumers and 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 work that makes us proud as a nation you know we we have such a diverse country we have so many insights we have such we have we are so we are so lucky you know we are so lucky mm. we don't we don't actually mm. appreciate how lucky we are and and i'd mm. love 5 seconds to help thank you